welcome back to another segment of What's Up with Nick and Chuck. I'm Andy, the marketing guy from HUI. This week we are back with Nick and Chuck as we continue our conversation with Josh Towski on uh, industrial design. Uh, this week we will be talking about um, surface modeling uh, when it comes to the in industrial design. So with that, I'll send you to Nick and Chuck. Hey everybody, welcome back. Hey everybody. Today we have back with us Josh Talski, our industrial designer from last week, and also with us is Mark Collins, our applications engineer. Hey guys. How's it going? How you doing, guys? How you doing? Thanks for joining us again today, Josh. We appreciate having you on the show. Now, would you be able to explain to us a little bit on why it's good practice to take and finish your concepts in CAD? Sure, yeah, no problem. Um, usually, uh, for me, I start off with like 2D uh, work. You, you do Either that's uh, in concept sketching form or some other form, but eventually these things need to get made. And that's where CAD comes in. That's going to be able to be the bridge between the, the sketches and the final product that gets put on the shelves. Um, so it's extremely important to get to that point with the designer so they can carry through their intent. And then uh, eventually that gets handed off to engineering or manufacturing, and they'll probably manipulate that a little bit prior to going into production. What type of direction does that provide, Mark, once a concept that's been finished in CAD gets the engineering? Well, certainly if, um, if you have a very aesthetic part, like a molded part, um, a big plastic part, uh, a casting, uh, a lot of times the industrial designer will put a lot of effort into making it look just right, where the engineer sometimes, you know, makes a solid model instead of a surface model. And then what is the difference between the two? What is that doing to that image? Um, well, I guess uh, a surface model has got complex curves, where a uh, solid model is more of um, uh, extrudes and cuts. So a, um, I don't know, Josh, how would you describe it? What's the difference between a solid and a, and a, a surface model? Surface model, thank you. Yeah, um, from my understanding of the way I look at it, surface models usually are a combination of surfaces that are trimmed and then knit together, kind of like, a, um, you know, like a backpack, a different surfaces just knit together. Um, the thing about it, about SolidWorks or CAD modeling in general, is that these surfaces, as, as far as the program is concerned, have zero thickness. Um, so they're really not, um, at the beginning, they're not designed to go into production. Uh, at least from my experience, what I'll always do is take those surface models and then I thicken them or manipulate them in a way so if they can be transformed from a surface body to a solid body. So, you know, they, uh, even like a Coke can might have uh, a certain th a two millimeter thickness on the, uh, the walls of the aluminum. The, if you're going into production, you need to know that information. So that's where so it comes. So a surface modeling, who, who benefits from surface modeling? Is it the engineer or is it the client? I would say both. Uh, the, the engine, it depends on this. If, as a designer, um, usually I'll be at the forefront of designing the aesthetics. And so it only makes sense that the designer would see it through as long as possible so that the intent can be carried through by the same person or the same people. Um, and before it's handed off to engineering so they can use that information without having to recreate new stuff based on a two-dimensional sketch, for example. Um, the surface modeling techniques, it's just another tool to use. Um, it allows for certain freedoms that solid modeling may not um, right off the bat. And uh, so usually when you're talking about really complex products, um, you know, maybe something like a bicycle helmet or uh, a motorcycle. There's a lot of really intricate, detailed surfaces, very complex surfaces that are going on there um, that solid modeling isn't really intended for, um, from my experience. So uh, if, the, if you have somebody who can create good surface models, a designer can create good, good surface models, then it only helps your end product, both for the engineer and the client that uh, is purchasing the surfaces. So in the surface modeling, you can capture those details so that when they're solid modeling, those details are 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 brought into the solid model. I, you know, I guess sure help distinguish yeah. the difference between the two. You say that uh, you know 
it, it's just another tool. So as you're making it, something's not quite right. You can push, you can pull, you can move stuff around. Um, and then I'll, then you get it, and you get it just right. And then when you hand it off to an engineer, um, he might have problems with the model. He might start over in the sense where uh, he's going to build it from the ground up, now knowing exactly what the end product is. And then he can lay those two over each other and find out where he's where he needs to make some tweaks and changes. So in, in my opinion, it's more of, um, you know, the, the designer gets the aesthetics great and perfect, and the engineer gets the model great and perfect. Even though they might, at the end of the day, they should be almost the exact same thing. 